Philosophy, nature, is written in that great book, whichever is before our eyes. I mean the universe, but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols in which it is written. The book is written in mathematical language, and the systems or triangles, circles, and other geometrical figures without whose help it is impossible to comprehend a single word of it, without which one wanders in vain through a dark labyrinth. Galileo Galilei. Greetings, mortals. I'm your host Simon, and you are once again tuning in to the Library of Gnosis. I have previously delved into the world of geometry in my video titled What are Fractals? The Fibonacci Sequence and the Structure of Reality. Link in the description. But in today's video, I want to explore geometry some more. This time we'll be exploring what is known as the Platonic Solids. The Platonic Solids, also known as the regular polyhedra, are a remarkable set of five three-dimensional shapes that have fascinated thinkers, mathematicians, and artists for centuries. Named after the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, these geometric forms exhibit astonishing symmetry, precision, and mathematical beauty. In this video, we will delve into the world of the Platonic solids, exploring their history, characteristics, and the enduring influence they have had on various fields, from mathematics and astronomy to art and philosophy. The concept of the Platonic solids can be traced back to the dialogue of Plato the famous philosopher from ancient Greece. Plato was deeply interested in the nature of reality and believed that geometry held the key to understanding the fundamental building blocks of the universe. In his work, Timaeus, Plato associated each of the Platonic solids with the classical elements. The tetrahedon is a four-phase solid composed of equilateral triangles. It represents the element of fire and symbolizes energy and change. The hexahedron, often referred to as the cube, has six equal square faces. It symbolizes the element of earth and represents stability and groundedness. The octahedron is an eight-faced solid consisting of equilateral triangles. It represents the element of air and symbolizes balance and freedom. The dodecahedron is a 12-phase solid, with each phase being a regular pentagon. It represents the element of aether, or quintessence, and signifies the unity of all things in the cosmos. The icosahedron featured 20 equilateral triangles as its faces. It represents the element of water and symbolizes solidity and adaptability. The platonic solids possess several key characteristics that make them unique and intriguing. Regular faces. Each face of a platonic solid is identical in shape and size, which contributes to the aesthetic appeal and mathematical elegance. Equal edges. All edges of a platonic solid have the same length, ensuring uniformity and symmetry. Equal angles. The angles formed by the intersection of edges in these solids are also identical, adding to their geometrical harmony. Vertex symmetry. At each vertex, the same number of edges and faces come together. This characteristic is vital to the overall symmetry of the platonic solids. Platonic solids. There are only five platonic solids, and no other can be constructed with the same set of characteristics. This exclusivity makes them a unique group in the world of polyhedra. Johannes Kepler's first astronomical work, Mysterium Cosmographicum, the Cosmographic Mystery, was the second published defense of the Copernican system. Kepler claimed to have an epiphany on July 9, 1595, while teaching in grass, demonstrating the periodic conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in the zodiac, which he reasoned 
might be the geometrical basis of the universe. After failing to find the unique arrangement of polygons that fit known astronomical observations, even with the extra planets added to the system, Kepler began experimenting with three-dimensional polyhedra. He found that each of the five platonic solids could be uniquely inscribed and circumcised by spherical orbs. Nesting these solids, each encased in a sphere with one another, would produce six layers corresponding to the six known planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. By ordering these correctly, octahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron, tetrahedron, and cube, Kepler found that spheres correspond to the relative size of each planet's path around the Sun, generally varying from astronomical observations by less than 10%. He attributed most of the variance to inaccuracy in measurements. So, to simplify this the best I can, Kepler discovered that there is a correlation between the circumference of the platonic solids to each other and the ratio of the orbits planets to each other. I hope I made that simple enough, because reading that previous explanation on Wikipedia hurt my brain. As indicated in the title, Kepler thought he had revealed God's geometrical plan for the universe. Much of Kepler's enthusiasm for the Copernican system stems from his theological convictions about the connection between the physical and the spiritual. The universe itself was an image of God, with the Son corresponding to the Father, the stellar sphere to the Son, and the intervening space between two Holy Spirit. His first manuscript of Mysterium contained an extensive chapter reconciling heliocentrism with biblical passages that seem to support geocentrism. His view that the Son is the Father ties nicely into my theory that Mercury, which is the closest planet to the Sun, is in fact Jesus in the as above. The Platonic solids originating from the philosophical musings of Plato stand a timeless symbol of beauty, symmetry, and mathematical precision. Their unique characteristics and historical significance continue to captivate the human imagination across various fields, from mathematics and science to art, philosophy, and spirituality. These geometric wonders remind us of the profound interconnectedness of mathematics, art, and the fundamental principles that shape our understanding of the universe. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I want to end by thanking all my current Patreon supporters. If you also want to support my work, then you can find me on Patreon. If you sign up to my Patreon, you will get all the scripts for my videos in text format. In the PDF, all my sources are included. I will see you in the next video. Mortals, peace out.